Today, Scott and I are going to bring you the greatest tracks that have ever been played on the legendary wall bass. And this first track we're gonna check out, we're actually gonna first go into the studio with Rick Rubin yes. and Flea when they were recording one of the classics from the Blood Sugar Sex Magic album, obviously Red Hot Chili Peppers. So first jumping into the studio and then we're gonna jump to the actual final track of the original recording. Check it out. Yeah. That was a cool little build. Oh. See that? See, that should be the vibe. Like what you just... Yeah. It is so hard because there's so little time in each thing. But just keep them really simple. Ba-dum. Ba-da-dum. Okay. Uh, ba Dude, I love it. Ba-dum. Okay. I love how he's instructing Flea here. You know, like I love how he's saying... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it simple, right? Because Flea's playing all this other stuff and he's just like, hold on, man. Like, Leave lock the space. it down. Yeah. Leave the space. Should we have a listen to what it sounded like when they actually did it in the album? Here's the album version. Check it out. Snedrum. Monster sound right. And that's what you'll hear through all of these tracks that we're gonna show you today. Many different styles, you know, completely different players, but something that the wall does that's kind of just completely different to all of the basses is how the, the tone circuit works. Yeah. Looks normal, it yeah. ain't normal. Yeah. So if you do wanna play that bass line, for instance, and yeah. I will kind of sort of like, just, I guess, sort of like demo some of the sounds that you can get out of this. Just, and I'm just gonna go wild just so you can hear how different this all is. Yeah, so totally clean. What I'm using on this is I'm pulling up on the volume knob and that becomes pick attack. And you don't have to play with a pick to use it, but if I'm not using it, you pull up on this knob as I'm playing this, Scott. Engaging the, the pick attack. It's right. just that top end, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got these other, pick, these other. well, this here, just to put, tell you what this is, this is just like a blend for the two pickups. And then down here, you've got these weird, like, filters. They're almost like wah-wah pedals in the actual, but a wah-wah. Yeah. Wah, that's a funny word to say. Anyway, do you want to play? And I'm going to move yeah. it around, see what happens. <laughs> That's so cool. So that's just on that one. What about this one here? Oh. <laughs> so you can get all of these completely wacky sounds out of it. And they're all like really usable as well. You obviously just have to sort of like play around them with them and find what's gonna be right for you. But it gives you the ability to pull sounds out of the bass that you're probably not gonna get on another bass. Yeah, and if you select one pickup and you do this thing with the, uh, where you pull up the knob and then you roll that filter back, listen to this. Yeah. It just so goes cool, underneath yeah. and yeah. now it's just a submachine, right? Crazy, no other bass. Big money. Yeah. Rush. <laughs> Have you been preparing this oh, riff, man, Mr. This, Allison? <laughs> this riff is insane. He's like, this is hard. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Huge tone. I mean. By the way, we are expecting that you sing at the same time as demoing this. <laughs> I think this riff and Getty's sound in this era is so much fun. So Getty is smashing the bass. Like he's not playing. He's playing. That's a key part of his style. Yeah. That's what Getty, how Getty plays. Yeah, so I'm just blending in the center. I'm pulling up to get that pick attack. And here's that great line from Getty Lee. Now check 
it out. If you want to learn any of these riffs, we've done a PDF workbook for you. We'll put the link in the description. You can click on that, download. It's completely free. It's got all of the tab and notation so you can learn this stuff. I'm going to be downloading that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Right, are you ready to move on? Yeah. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Okay, so next up, we've got Tool, Mr. Justin Chancellor on bass. And this riff is awesome. Another pick, for sure. Woo. Super creepy video. Yeah, <laughs> I know, so creepy. <laughs> Slow phaser, definitely through some kind of amp, really bright yeah, in the yeah. top or like high mid range, right? But really, I mean, I think about sounds a lot, but you don't have to. You can for sure just do this without any kind of sound. I'm gonna use though a bit of slow chorus and amp. Oh yeah. But something is, Justin Chancellor has an unbelievable like articulation in that triplet. Are you hammering it? Are you yeah. hammering it all on? Yeah. And it's worth saying too, I think he picks a little closer to the neck. How do you play this? Uh, let me check it out too. normally like that, but... Like now when you're playing it there, just above the neck. Yeah. It sounds way cooler, and he's obviously he's probably getting a little bit of... You know when you angle the pick, you get a bit of a... Yeah. Instead of playing it flat. And Justin's probably getting that sound because he's, you know, he's a low sli a low slinger? Yeah. Low slunger? Cool guy. Cool Where guy. Down here. Not like me, like sort of like diffusion guy. The diffusion guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not that dude. Not that dude. So yeah, he's getting a great tone. And he's probably got that from going down there. And you've also have you got your pick attack up on that as well? Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to get a little more treble out of the bass. I have the filters engaged too, just to get a little quack got out it. of the top end. Yeah. But you know, you can get a similar sound on maybe a Stingray. You don't have to buy a wall. Oh my gosh, so sorry oh. to damage the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to have one of these basses to get a similar sound. I think a Stingray gets pretty close. And I know that Chancellor used a Stingray, I think on the first Tool record, but I think this one was actually a wall. Yeah. Now we're gonna take a bit of a detour. We're going, we're gonna, we're gonna get this bass from down here. Yeah, we we're are. Gonna, mm, mm. Oh. Oh, bring that strap up uh, a little higher, a mm -mm. little higher. Higher, higher, higher. Mm -mm. higher. Yeah, a little higher, a little higher. higher. Got a jazz fusion, baby, <laughs> yeah. Right under the chin. <laughs> right under the chin like my vibe, yeah. Well, actually, I'm not sure he does, but anyway. So next up, we've got Yannick Guizdala, and the album was Mystery to Me, uh, 2008. The track is called Darkness, and this, me and Jim, Jim behind the camera there, fact-checking Jim, were nerding out about this, because we <laughs> freaking love this album. We loved it. It was probably an understatement. It was like, I listened to it so many times. And Yannick, although he's sort of like, you know, probably known for like Federas and Madison basses and yeah. kind of like that thing, he actually played a Wall Mark III on this album. Uh, five string with a high C. Check this out. Awesome riff. Do you know who the drummer is? Jojo Mayer. It is Jojo Mayer. <laughs> Super tight bridge sound, right? Yeah. Tim Miller on guitar. Oh, so 
so good. So good. I show love us, that album, dude. Show us how you're getting that bridge pickup sound. So I've just got everything sort of like cranked, everything cranked, but the bridge pickup, I'm not going. I've got bridge soloed, neck all the way off. And I'm not, interestingly, you know, like with the Justin Chancellor thing, he's over here playing just in front of the neck pickup. If I go. Ah. Uh, that's yes. not the vibe. It's uh, totally different. Huge difference. Huge. Dude, are we having some more jazz? Dude, we're still in the fusion <laughs> land. The bass is still bass where is I like it. Traveled where, where I like it. Up north. Okay, so next up we've got the monstrously amazing Lawrence Cole, who is a legend here in the UK. This album actually, which is the Lawrence Cole Quintet Live, was something I listened to over and over and over and over again. And this track is absolutely phenomenal. And we've got a live yeah. version of the track that I will show you after this, but I just wanna, the bass is so clean in this that I needed to oh, show you. He's a monster. He's a monster, check this out. It's almost impossible to play this, <laughs> for me anyway. <laughs> I'm just like, is there a bass player in the house? Not gonna be me. Check out that for a melody. <laughs> Woo, spicy. So that riff is actually, let me, it's in, it's interesting, like Ian was just like, we have to show everybody that riff, okay? Yeah. We have well, to. Well, I was like, you and then, have to and show yeah, it. And then he was like, Scott, work it out. <laughs> Scott, go on, Divine. <laughs> Get to work. Yeah, that's right. We're not here to have fun, okay? Uh, so it is. Oh! But I'm going to slow that down for you, okay? So it's, again, it's like an E minor kind of vibe, and it's. So it's to get fancy. It's a Dorian kind of vibe, yes. right? Dorian uh, vibe, but yeah. he does. He's got this, which is like a flat five, which is out there. Yes. But at the blues that, scale, right? But in that triad, it sounds so yeah, obtuse. Yeah, because it's, it's like a weird D yes. augmented triad. Ooh, and then blues. Yeah, oh, that. Um, I love yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Outlandish. Oh! <laughs> Tab and notation down below, totally free. I've also got this clip of Lawrence playing it live with the same band. Okay, check this out. I think that Lawrence needs more love in the world. Lawrence, you need more love. I'm sending you my love. <gasps> also worth noting as well that Lawrence was Yannick's teacher. Ah. Super cool stuff. Anyway, here's Lawrence doing it live. Check it out. Pleated pants, dude. Oh yeah, it's all about the pleated pants, dude. It's fast. Uh, uh. Okay, next up we've got Percy Jones. Some people who have been watching this and they'll be like, I bet they don't mention Percy Jones. I bet they don't mention Brand X. I am here for you. <laughs> okay, so check this out. We said that Yannick Guizdala went to study with Lawrence Cottle when he was getting started when he was 18, okay? Well, Lawrence Cottle was a huge fan of Percy Jones, of the band Brand X. Drummer was... 
No clue. <laughs> Phil Collins. Oh, that's right. So I'm going to play this track, and then I've also got another clip I'm going to play so you can see Percy Jones in action with Phil Collins from, Je like the Phil Collins from Genesis. He was actually a sort of like a session drummer in London at the time. He played in this great band called Brand X. I'm going to show you a clip of them after this one as well. But this is a real classic. It's off Brand X, unorthodox behavior recorded in 1976, and it's super cool. Fretless Wall, Mark One. Oh. It's kind of like an acoustic sound as well. Yeah. Brandex was like the UK's version of Weather Report. Okay. That, that was the vibes. It's fast. I don't know how to play this. Ian before he was like, oh dude, we, we need to learn that. And I was like, dude, we do not need to learn. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> hey, but let me show you this um, this other uh, clip of Brand X uh, where you can see Percy Jones in action with a bearded Phil Collins oh, on the drums. Love it. Old Grey Whistle Test. Do you got this was a legendary TV program before I was born. Or maybe as I was born. Wait, no, before I was born. There you can see the wall Mark 1. But with the pit guard actually. Now hold on, dude. That is not a Mark 1. Oh that's not a, a Mark 1. It's called a Wall Pro. Oh, Wall Pro. Yeah. For the pros. Yeah, for the pros. <laughs> I think they did it, they did a pro that had one pickup. They did. Right? And then two pickups. And that thing, I think it had like a leather pick guard or the earliest yes. versions. Yeah. A cool leather I pick I saw guard. it on the Norman's Ray Guitar YouTube channel. Um, they had like this green wall pro with the leather pick, leather pick yeah, guard. Yeah, very That's cool. what I'm talking about. Okay, now, final one, but don't go anywhere because Ian felt really strongly about this next yeah. player. Yeah. Really strong. He was like, we cannot do this video without including this player. Yeah. Do you know who it is? Can you guess? Give you 10 seconds. 10, 9, put it in the comments. 8, 7, don't write their name after I get to 1. 8, 7, 6, do you know? 5, 4, 3, Two, Mick one, Karn. Mick Karn. <laughs> Do not write any names in the comments after this, okay? But check this out. This is, well, this is off his album, isn't it? And it's yeah. kind of like, it's really conceptual. Again, we haven't worked out this riff because it's it's kind of like he's playing really free. Yeah. You can hear he's on a fretless as well. Yeah, he's on a fretless wall. So this is Mick Karn on his record, The Tooth Mother. And this is Bestile or Bestial Cluster. Bestial. Bestial. A bestial. Bestial Cluster. Where was Mick? He's a Londoner, right? I don't know. My bestial cluster. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, check it out. Oh. Freaking awesome, Travis. You know, with like albums like this, with albums like this, I just imagine everybody like going into the studio and be like, okay, <laughs> so let's see what happens. Like, do, do, do albums come out like this anymore? It's just sort of like a soup, a creative soup of musicians in the studio. I don't know. It's so cool. The sounds are so cool. Yeah. Oh. We got him in there for you guys. Mick Karn, legendary player. Let me say too, if you want to get close to that Mick Karn vibe, I just think you turn on an octave pedal, maybe have some chorus. Yeah. And that kind of brings me into that almost sort of like Tony Levin, Mick Karn exactly sound. Exactly that, yeah. And then he's got 
where he's sliding yeah, harmonics. Yeah, he's going fretless, yeah. Oh, it's so, so cool, man. Yeah. I love the sound of Mick Carnes playing. Is there anything else we should mention about the wall bass? Yeah, they're freaking expensive, dude. Yeah, they're expensive. They're expensive, they're too expensive. They're really, really cool. There's a long wait if you want a new one. The old ones are hard to find and they're really expensive. You don't need to have one to get some of these sounds. You can use a Stingray, even a jazz bass sort of comes close, I think, when you have the two pickups in the center, but they're so fun. And since we had two of them, this is Scott's, this is mine. We yeah. wanted to show you, make this video for you, just so you could get this taste of English history, dude. Yeah, and there's some really interesting things as well. As we talked about earlier, the electronics are completely different. All of the pickups are made in-house. The bridge was their own. Yeah. And, and, and like for, for most of them, they actually have a wall, uh, not a wall, called mahogany core, and then they have different woods on the, uh, on the facings, the top and the back. Interestingly, this is my favorite look. Oh, really? Yeah, like I'm not gonna swap the basses because this was the bass that That's... was used in the Live Aid, you know, um, Feed the World. This bass was in that video with John Taylor playing it. So it's a kind of a unique beast. But if I was looking to buy a wall, if I was, you know, wanting to sort of like give up a kidney because that they're so expensive, outlandish, I would probably go for the, for the, the Wenge facing. For me, I just think they're awesome. And uh, I happen to really like the sycamore, so uh, let's do a little uh, <laughs> little trade ski. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks so much for watching this video. You'll find us over at scottsbasslessons.com, by the way. If you wanna, you know, come and nerd out with us on bass, learn how to play this thing a little bit better, we are here for you. Go to scottsbasslessons.com and we'll find you there. Take it easy, bye.